Today, we're going to carry on talking about algebra as for a monad. Now, last time, we were very bad category theorists because we defined this thing called algebras, but we didn't put them into a totality. And one of the things we like doing as category theorists is considering totalities of things. So, as you might have guessed, algebras for a monad form a category. And in order to say what that category is, of course, we have to say what the morphisms are. So here's the definition of an algebra. Remember, it's an object in the category equipped with an action satisfying these axioms. So a morphism of algebras, you might say, is the obvious thing. So let's see what the obvious thing is. I'll just take these away so I've got a bit of space. Definition. A morphism... of algebras for T consists of, well, let's see, we've got an object A, so let's say what our, what our two algebras are that we're thinking about. So we're going to have a morphism of algebras and it's going to go from, whoops, here's one of my algebras, and this morphism is going to go to another algebra, T, B, to B, with an action given by phi. hope that's big enough. So a morphism is going to consist of, first of all, a morphism of the underlying objects. consists of a morphism of underlying objects. So if this is F, it's called, it's of course F going from A to B. Now, you can probably you can probably hallucinate yourself into seeing what has to happen next. Because if F is going from A to B down here, then there jolly well ought to be something up here making all this commute. So such that the following square commutes. Over here, you've got your algebra action. Over here you've got, sorry, your morphism on underlying objects, and here you've got your other algebra action. What can go up here? T of F. So this diagram has to commute, such that this commutes. Now, there are two ways of seeing why this is obvious. There's the sort of meditate in a categorical manner way, which is, well, it's the obvious diagram, so it has to commute. But the other way of seeing how it's obvious is thinking about the example we just did with monoids. Because you know, you'd really hope that the category of algebras, the morphisms in that category, are going to give you the morphisms of monoids, as we had before. So what's a morphism of monoids? Well, it's a morphism of the underlying sets, such that that morphism, that is, that function of underlying set, sets, interacts properly with the action of the monoid. And that's exactly what this is saying. It's saying that this morphism of the underlying objects has to interact properly with the action for the algebras. So let's see in a bit more detail what it gives us in the case of monoids. But where am I going to put it? Let's see. I'm going to put it up here so I can leave the axiom in place. So let's go back to our example that we now know and love. The example of monoids. Oh, it's the monad The monoid, so remember C is set, and T, well, T is defined by T of F equaling the set of words in X. So what's this saying? Let's remind ourselves for a second what a morphism of monoids is. Usually, A morphism of monoids. Uh, let's call it um, uh, um, uh, um, A to B is, let's call this F, is a function such that it interacts properly with the multiplication. So that's saying that F of A times B is the same as F of A times F of B. Now remember that multiplication here is given by the action of the monoid. So what does this correspond to down here? Well, a completely typical example of a word up here is A 
comma b. And then what we get when we do theta is a times b. So that's what we get from theta. Now what's this saying up here? Well, let's do the one down here first because it's more obvious. Down here, that's taking us to f of a times b. Up here, it's saying do t of f. What that means is we're going to do t, we're going to do f on each of the individual letters here. It's still a word, but now we've done f to each letter. So f of a is an element of b. That was terrible notation. A and b are both elements of a. Someone should have stopped me. Okay, so f of a and f of b are both elements of b. So this is now a perfectly good word in b, which makes it an element of t of b. And when we do the action of b, what we get is we multiply those two things together. So we get f of a times f of b. And the commutativity of this diagram says that those two things have to be equal. So this diagram is exactly saying that the morphism has to interact properly with the algebra structure that we have there. Exactly the same thing will happen if we do categories or any of the other examples which we might like to think about. So one of the key things now, we've done monoids and we've done categories, you might want to ask yourself, well hopefully you're thinking, wow, this monad thing is amazing. Perhaps we can do everything like this. And so that's a very good question. The question is, given any particular mathematical theory, can you express it in terms of monads? Or that is to say, can it be expressed as the category of algebras for a monad? What we haven't quite written down properly is the fact that given any monad, given any monad T, we have alg T, the category of algebras. And so you might say to yourself, here is a question. Given some random category, given a category D, is it equivalent to some category of algebras for something? Is it equivalent to alg T for some T? Now, usually, we have an underlying category in mind here. For example, we know that a monoid is a set equipped with some extra stuff. So we can ask ourselves whether monoids can be expressed via monads on set. We know that groups are also sets equipped with some extra stuff. So we can ask ourselves if groups can be expressed via a monad on set. We know that topological spaces are sets equipped with some extra stuff. So we might ask ourselves if spaces can be expressed as via a monad on set. And that's a rather interesting example because the answer to that one is no. But the question is still a good one, and that is the question of monadicity. So this is the question, this is more or less the question, is more or less the question of monadicity. So a category D is called monadic over a category C. If D can be expressed as a category of algebras for a monad on category C. And we'll talk more about monadicity later, but it probably has to come after we talk about the junctions. But anyway, that's all about the category of algebras for now.